Hi everyone. In the last video, you know, we built the fast API and we integrated, you know, chat GPT or open AI API into it so that we can build, let's say, you know, a chat GPT or AI powered backend or APIs, right? So this is what we built. You know, we had this fast API where we could pass, you know, some product details like the name of the product and maybe some notes about the product, what it does. So here I'm saying, you know, name is let's say car protect and what it does maybe i say you know it's a robust multicolor you know car cover and then if you make a request to api it will use let's say open ai chat gpt and it will generate a description for your product you know that's what we did right or maybe we can just see you know uh, the details of what we have done so if you see in details what we did in the last video we kind of learned how to install and run fast api then we understand how to create the gate and post endpoints in our API. That's what, you know, you see here, those multiple endpoints. And you could see, you know, we generated the introduction for our car protect with some emojis and, you know, all sorts of things. And then we learn, you know, how to pass a request data as a query parameters and, you know, how to pass it as a request body and what's its implication. Then we learn how can we, you know, call our own API, right? How to make request to our own API using Python request library. And then we also understand what is Pydentic models and how to use them in a fast API. They are there to, you know, add some kind of a data validation layer to your request data, right? So here, if you could see, uh, when I click on product description, it knows that, you know, it's going to take some object which is going to require a name and the notes. Okay, you can go and rewatch the video. And the finally, we integrated, let's say, you know, open ai chat gpt into fast api you know sorry you know there is some noise in the background but yeah so we integrated open ai into uh, fast api now what we're going to do in this video we're going to take this application and we're going to actually deploy this application on aws server so that you know not just local hosts anyone can you know access this particular application and that's what we're going to uh, do so let's do one thing, right? Let's create the new EC2 instance, you know, that we can use to deploy our application. So if you come to AWS, right? If you come to AWS, uh, you can, you know, search here EC2 or if you have used it, you know, earlier then it will come, right? So you can go to the EC2, which is like VMs that, you know, you can create and you could see if you have any existing, you know, VMs running. Let me zoom it a bit. Yeah. So if you see if you have any instances running already, so let's say I already have 11 instances running here and then, you know, you can create the new instances. So you can click on your launch instance. So let me click here a launch instance and then you can give some name to your instance. Maybe I would call it, you know, uh, what like I will call, you know, fast API demo or something. Or let me call fast API YouTube demo or something like this. Now I can choose, uh, you know, I think I can choose the uh, OS I want. I could choose the Ubuntu. I could choose the Amazon Linux for simplicity. Let's, you know, choose the Linux. Doesn't matter, uh, doesn't matter much actually, you know, uh, but let's use the Amazon Linux. And then maybe, you know, uh, we select the instance type. Let's select the instance type. And we will use something which is free tier eligible, like here one virtual CPU and one GB RAM, which is sufficient for us to test our application. And then you can either use your existing key pair because, you know, let's say you want to connect to this VM, you know, using SSH client from other, you know, from your local host from somewhere, right? So you need some key to authenticate that, you know, you have access to this particular VM. So let's create one new key pair. You know, maybe I call it the same, maybe I think I call it, let's say, fast api youtube demo i will call it the same and maybe i yeah, i could get pam or ppk let's pam is fine let's you know create the pair and i guess it got downloaded here okay maybe i would just take that pam file and put it into the folder that we are currently using you know maybe if i could go here i can i directly paste here oh no i think i can't so maybe I have to go through this proper uh, hierarchy and finally I need to go to the YouTube tutorials that I create and one of the tutorial we are doing is which one yeah this one yeah here let's put it here so that it's easy to uh, you know access so now we have it here right you could see now we have it here let's go to the next and now 
whether we want to allow traffic from anywhere yes from anywhere let's our instance they can access if you host there anything right allow https that is also fine allow http yes let the people you know uh, visit our http api if we, you know host it here i can keep everything default and simply launch an instance right so let's launch instance so it might take some you know uh, time yeah i think instance launched successfully let's go to click here whether it is ready or not right it might get ready it's pending state so it's it's processing right so these are your instance details you know uh, you can see you know uh, for example it's a public ip address we will require this thing if you want to access you know currently we are accessing like you know local host but we're going to require this public ip address and then what else we might you can see it's instance type is micro another interesting thing is the security here you will have some security rules we will go through it you know when we're going to need it here it is going to define you know that inbound rules since we you know at port is accessible someone can reach from anywhere and access the at port like anything you're going to host as a website or something like that right we will come here again you see now our instance state is running now means we can connect to this instance so if you click on a connect connect you know uh, you will have multiple options to connect like instance connect i guess this is like you know it will open directly in the browser and you know you can start working let me see so we will see the multiple ways actually you know uh, uh, to connect we will see the connecting using this you know you see there's nothing right so we can connect using browser also we can connect using you know normal ssh client like we can use git bash in the vs code and we can connect and we will also see how to use the graphical user interface like bin scp putty because that's what i use most of the time right i don't write commands and anything i usually try to do something easy so this is how we can connect okay uh, maybe we can connect uh, let's say using ssh client right so we can even connect using ssh client and what we want to let's say they have given here already you know uh, the command that we can use to connect this particular instance so let's copy this thing you could see this command here is again we are using ssh this is our identity file or let's say pem file then the user so if you create this vm right linux uh, ec2 vm the ec2 user will be the user if you use ubuntu vm then user will be ubuntu right you can come here and see no need to remember and then finally this is your uh, you can use here ip or this address whatever right so let's copy this thing and see whether we are able to connect let's go here maybe i open another powershell right and uh, let's see if i am able to connect let's see it's in the same directory right this one so let's try to connect right let me clear this thing and let's use that same command what they have given and i would say yes and it is saying you know uh, you have a bad permissions you need to change the permission right and uh, you know so if you go to again this you will say that you need to change actually the permission right so change the permission now this syntax is actually you know linux terminal or kind of you know, not the best so that's why i don't want to use when you whenever i want to do maybe scp or ssh or something you can use the bash terminal right you can simply go here and use the git bash right and let's try first you know again you could see we are in the same folder first let's uh, make the changes whatever you know the bad permission changes now they are changed now let's see whether we are able to connect to this instance let's copy again the same command and we will go here and uh, you know let's uh, do this thing right okay so finally we are connected to vm right we just copy pasted that same uh, you know url so let's say you don't create the instance and someone will share the details what detail they should share they will share the pem file with you so that you can connect and they will share the public ip or this host name you know so that you can connect whatever it could be now we have already connected right but uh, to run there we need to transfer our this folder you know app folder to that instance you know to run our application so let's do one thing right so we're going to need an scp command you know uh, just like ssh we have scp to securely copy our you know the data there so that we can do let's see i kept the command handy here you know uh, or should we first use uh, let's say the you know graphical user interface or no? let's use the graphical user interface and then we will come to the command right so maybe um, let's see how we can use the one of the tool we could use you know to transfer the file is called win scp so if you search win scp it's a windows scp client 
that you could use. I use this most of the time, right? Where you could easily transfer file using graphical user interface, right? We also need, you could also use call putty, you know, to connect SSH, right? We just saw we connected like this, right? That permission and all of those things. You could use this client. You can simply download. Installing is the easiest thing, like click, click next, and it's going to install. Right. So I use most of the time this too, and this works really good actually together. Like, you know, I will show you what I mean by that. Right. So maybe let's use Bean SCP and then I will show you how, how do we use that Bean SCP, you know? So let me go here and maybe I search Bean SCP because I use it, right? If you install, you will get it here. Then what you could do, you can create the new site here, right? To create the new site, uh, you require a host name. You require the username and then either password or some other authentication mechanism. Host name is actually this. You know, host name is uh, you could use this or you could use the public uh, IP address also, right? So you will be having a public IP address, you know, that you anyway going to require. Let's say this is a public IP address. That is the host name you could use, right? Username, we know it's an ECT user. Let's go back there because we know that the username is actually easy to user. So let's copy that thing. Right. For password, you can click on advanced because you don't have password. You actually have a PAME file that you can connect. So let's click on the advanced and then you see SSH. Click on SSH in the authentication. You can select your private key file. So you can browse here and uh, you can go to wherever your file is there. Again, I have to traverse now. Let's go to projects i have youtube tutorials and then i have something first api let me click on all files and you could see my pm file so let me select it open it and then it is saying you know it want to maybe do you want to convert into the the format that putty understand because you see it knows that we have a putty because that we can use to actually connect to uh you know VM. so let's click on ok and then they can store instead of PIM, it will now store the PPK file. So let's click on a save. Okay. And maybe we click on okay again. So we can save this thing so that we don't forget. So we can give some name, you know, we know that it's a fast API, you know, YouTube demo VM or something fast API YouTube demo. That is the VM I have. And then I click on, so now I could anytime come and simply click here, right? Now let's see whether we are able to connect. Let's click on a login and you can see it is connecting to the host. It is asking something, you know, first time. And finally it is using authentication that the key that we have provided and I think we connected. The left side you see is uh, something, uh, you know, that maybe I had earlier. And then I need to go here, you know, left side is my, uh, let's say, my local files, you see this app, fast API, the PPK PM file. And here, you know, you see, we, we didn't have anything, right? So if you see, we don't have anything uh, here, right? Now, the thing I told you, right, that, you know, they work really good together, the Win SCP and a putty. The thing is that because it has already taken our PM file and converted into the something that putty understand. So you see here, terminal icon, I can simply click here every time, you know, no need to do any SSH or anything. You know, once I have already set up this thing, now I'm there, right? So I can click on LS, you know, maybe I see there is nothing uh, is there, right? So maybe I can create a directory. Let's say I create directory Pradeep there. And, uh, you know, maybe it should come here if you refresh. Or is this the same? Yes. So EC2, I think we should how yeah it's come right so we just created this directory pretty so let's say we want to transfer our files here so let's click on the app you know we just require this app folder so let's if you click here right uh, sorry right yeah right click then you have upload option right it will go to the ect user let's click on upload so it's uh, going there right now we can create our environment uh, there okay our app folder is here you could see you know we got our app folder let's say we change anything here simply you know if you change uh, something inside the app folder like main.py or anything it will simply reflect you know there we also have requirement files that we need to use to create the environment that we want right uh, same way that we created locally so let's go to the uh, you know this instance here we did the make right what is this this one is my i think old one let me close this thing okay and uh, yeah, so you could say Pradeep is here. App is also there. 
let's uh, start the environment let's we want to create the environment right so the environment how do we create i think we create a python uh, 3 maybe yeah, python 3 hyphen m v e and v that's the environment and the name of the environment like i say the fast environment and it should create the environment uh, for us right let's see whether we see the environment folder yeah you could see the result. Right? so how do we activate on linux we saw last time how to activate on windows right so linux i think we have to do source right and then our uh, the environment folder this one and then we have to do bin so i type b and press tab so that it in auto complete and then i guess it is activate yeah and then you should see the fast environment got activated currently it doesn't have anything it's just the python environment but then we want to install the requirement file from here so we can do pip install right and then hyphen r for the requirement file and where it is it is inside the app so app requirement .txt. so it will take some time to again you know um, install this requirement once it is uh, installed then what we will do we will actually you know uh, start our fast api server and we will access okay good so clear clear this thing right now let's go to the app folder what we have and look at our files again okay we have this files now here right this looks very small or something uh, i'm not able to zoom it should i connect to the web console let's go here and you know this is the thing we could do let's go to the web console did we connect it earlier uh, i think we had connected but then we disconnected let's try now let's connect from the web console maybe because i could do zoom here right so that it will be easy for you to see what's happening so it's again establishing connection there and yes it is much more better in terms of readability right let's see whether we have the same data yeah we'll see our environment everything is there right but you don't see here the environment is activated because that's a different thing what we did here right so let me close this window and maybe i use only this one let's again activate let's say source and we have to go to the fast api then bean and then finally activate okay you could see that it got activated let's go to the app folder where we have our fast api files right we just want to start our fast api i think i kept the command handy here if i go to the deploy.txt this is how you start your fast api server you just say uvicon main app host and then you can give the port number you know uh, this is like a local host uh, because let's say i'm running locally on my that particular thing right and then i can specify the port number let's copy this thing where is this we shot okay paste right uvicon is the server here is the file which has the uh, you know fast api app and here is the app instance and running on a port 8000 you could change any different port if you want if you want to learn on something different i think it started running now let's start to access how are we going to access we need it's a public ip right to access this particular thing so here is the public ip you know let's go here let me close this thing other thing we are not using go here and type 8000 and we should be able to access our fast api uh, there first of all we don't have any root here maybe we have to do slash docs to get the docs right and let's say nothing happening we didn't get any error it's running fine 8000 seems to be it's not working the site is not reachable what's wrong with it okay the one thing i remember i told you the security rules is our 8000 is publicly accessible is it open port let's go and check so here is our instance and then here's our security rules and uh, if you look at only the two ports are open the port 80 and the port that 2022 which uh, we uh, you know we use actually to transfer our file but you don't see 8000 so let's open it right how do we edit these rules so let's click on a security group and you see inbound rules how you know traffic uh, you know can be reached to your instance let's edit those rules you know and maybe i add one more rule saying that tcp you know custom uh, yes i it should be coming from all the sources i don't care and uh, what port i want to open i want to open the 8000 port right let's click save the rules and uh, now it should you know 
see 8000 it should be reachable tcp 8000 now let's go and refresh you see now our app is publicly accessible right so you need to remember a lot of people make this mistake even let's say you got some details from someone else you didn't create the vm you just got the pem file and the public ip so that you can connect but let's say you are running some streamlit application which run on by default 8501 right let's say you want to run two fast api one is running on 8000 for other you need to choose some different port right so you need to tell the person or the admin whoever has given you the you know access to the vm that hey you need to open this particular port so that i can host the application in our case 8000 was not you know uh, open so we try to make it open and eventually it started working but if you go here it's not working right this one uh let's say control z because we don't have any root port right the not found there is no root let's look at our code if you look at our code we have a root for a slash okay right if you go to the slash okay there is something that you can get but we don't have a root right so we can create the root right there is nothing usually root uh, you could use you know to test whether everything is fine so root means we don't want anything right and maybe you know here also we can say you know okay on a root now we change the file right you need to transfer that file let's go here it's not going to change right uh, the okay because it's a local change and has nothing to do with the vm so let's transfer that file that just got changed so rather than transfer i will just transfer everything you know full upload <coughs> So let it transfer, you know, we only have a couple of files only. And once it transfer, let's do this thing. I think it has transferred and you still don't see it is reflecting. Maybe server is not um, able to get the recent files. Maybe we should restart our server. Let's go here, come here where it is. Okay. So you see someone is visiting, but it's not found. Let's control C, killed it. And I would, you know, do this thing again okay now this time let's see whether it is able to find our new root yes it is able to find so you need to restart right the other thing is that you know when you run your application actually you could do something like this hyphen hyphen reload one more flag so that if something changes it should reload like let's try and change something let's go here instead of okay we will say you know welcome home Okay, now let's run this file. This time, let's only transfer the file that we care about, which is the main.py. Let's transfer this file. Okay, maybe we can observe here. Here is nothing. And uh, let's go and push this file, come back here. And you see it detected that something changed. So it started reload, something got changed, and it automatically restart. That's what the reload flag does, right? Maybe I can, uh, you know, copy this thing okay i did a control c that's why it got cut actually you know but it was uh, did indeed it was you know reflected maybe if you want to see we can try again now this is what anyway this is manual restart but then just show you welcome back home i just want to make sure that you know it's working it's not just because i did the control c again let's transfer this file right it should automatically detect and we don't need to refresh and if i go here let's assume that it is restarted and welcome back home without the restarting why because we put that flag okay i hope you understand now how to run your application make sure your port is open how to make change upload those files right usually i use the graphical user interface most of it like like vnscp you know to connect because that makes life quite you know easier but then you could use putty because if you saw this option was only available this one if you have access to this AWS console, if not, then better you use that uh, you know, putty option I try, or you could do simply SSH, just like we did the SCP kind of thing, right? That's what uh, you could do here. I think here we did already SSH or SCP uh, or SSH we create, connected, right? This is what we did. Now, uh, maybe the one small thing, right? So we know how to connect, uh, you know, SCP. You can get that command. I'm also putting that command already that we use already, you know? to connecting uh, to your vm actually you know so this was the earlier yeah here so maybe let's see instead of uh, this win scp if you want to transfer this using commands and not the win scp right let's do this thing we can do uh, like let's go back to our application and we this time we will use command line to transfer the file where is our instance here right so it's running 
maybe I can stop this instance for now just to show you. Now you saw how to run the fast API. Hey, one more thing, uh, maybe I should tell you, right? Uh, but we haven't tested our app here, right? So let's test it before even we go further and do other activities, right? So I told you this is this, and maybe I say, you know, I have something called mobile protect or mobile cover. And then I would say, no, no, again, same thing. I would say it's a multicolor robust affordable, something like this. And then maybe I say execute and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to make a request to, you know, uh, open AI, you see open AI, you know, this is open API. This is just what we access, right? And it's going to make request to open AI and get things, right? It is calling the post method of product description and it got successful. Okay. So we got the description. We are on server, right? So that anyone can access. You can share this link with your friends and, you know, colleagues and they, they should be able to access the same way. And they can even call this API endpoint. Should we try this thing? Let's try. Uh, last time we did request it, right? So request.py order by identity. What was this job? It is okay. It was just making request to the pydentic, which was this one. Yeah, this one, which require the product and the number of units, right? Now we were using local. Let's use our own. This now VM. Where is this? Let me close the open one, right? Now it is hosting here so that anyone should be able to programmatically also access. So let's try this thing. I put it here and let's try the same thing. You know, we are saying laptop is equal to one and maybe how do we run? We need a local host, right? So currently it was running here. Do the control C clear CD app. And I just use Python and the name of the file, which is our request.py. Let's run that file request.py so it is now making request to our server detail not found what the hell is this request.py what detail it couldn't find let me go and check slash by application is equal to json request.post okay what detail it couldn't find so we do have a request.py here okay it didn't save okay let me save it now i saved it Great, the, it is able to get response from the server. We just saw it is able to access. So this way you can deploy, you can also see whether you are able to access your own server or not, right? I'm telling you these basic things because I'm assume that let's say you are doing first time. So as I also mentioned in the last video, I'm treating it like a beginner friendly, right? And this is also going to be useful from, you know, the interns I have or the team, new team member that I'm going to hire, right? Usually I teach them these steps to them, but now I anyway wanted a video because I use a lot fast API, right? So I want them to know how to connect to VM, how to run there. Last thing we should see is this. Let's go here again. Let's do the, uh, you know, close this window and go here. You see our app become, uh, you know, unresponsive because there is no app running because you close the window, right? You can't keep your whole day, uh, you know, your window open, right? So we need to run it in a background or no hop mode, right? So that's what we need to do. Let's go again to this console. This one, easy to instance connect. Let's use this because this is easy and I usually like the easy things. Okay, let's try to, re, uh, you know, run it using no hub command so that it keeps, even if you close this thing, it should be able to run, right? So let's use the no hub command. So no hub command, right? And let's run it in a background, literally, so that even you don't need to even close the uh, this particular window and you can start doing something else, right? So now it is running in the background, you see. What is this no such a file? What is this error? Because we haven't, you know, started our environment that is the reason right so let's start our environment fast environment bean activate right now let's try the same command and it should work now okay it's running in four to five six or something let's see whether it is running or not still seems to be some issue what could be the issue come here again where is our instance that we're running hey where it is here no hub ignoring what is wrong why it's not running maybe do we have any error here cat 
nohub dot out could not import the module mean yes we started this thing right but we didn't uh, run so it doesn't know what is the main because the main is inside the app and we haven't right so we can either go inside the app or we can show it that hey the main is actually inside this is also good learning so that you know if you want to uh, call something internal so let's say this is the syntax this is the folder name app dot main let's say this is a main is the file name and finally this app is the name now let's try again and see whether it works fine or not sorry again i think there's a lot more background noise but i hope you understand what i'm saying and uh, i think it's running now let's let's go and we could even check the same way the cat no hub if you want to check okay now we got something but the utils is not there okay maybe our you know those um, what you call uh, Uh, relate to imports are failing so for simplicity let me go to you know else i have need to import them in a properly but for now better simplicity go to the app folder where we have our files and run from there actually else you need to take care of this you know relative uh, imports right let me go back here and um, do this thing right and now <laughs> we have activated the environment we are actually inside the folder where it can find where is the main right and at least this time it should work let's go and refresh this thing okay finally our app is working and even if i close this thing let's close this thing and then go back here and it is still working right that's how you can deploy your fast api application which has let's say gpt and all of those stuff right and uh, i think we covered a uh, lot of things right we see how do we create the instance then we see how can we connect instance using this browser window we also see how do we connect using ssh client you know we also saw how we can use the graphical user interface like win sap and connect to it and if you want you could always use the sap command also that we tried which is like you know uh, using sap command also you can uh, transfer those files and then simply run the whatever the way want we also saw how to run you know what mistakes you could face like what if this port is not open then you need to go and open this port or you need to talk to your admin and tell them that to open this particular uh, you know port we also saw that if you close your window it might you know, will be you know available this is a mistake lot of my intenders right they say they deploy i test it it is working finally they close their window and it's the app is not there right so don't do this mistake make sure you use no hub okay i hope you found this video useful uh, maybe you know i wanted to create sub you know uh, kind of a sequential video to deploy but yeah actually I, in the last video also i told i want to create the video where how to build a let's a back end for the uh, chat gpt powered bot that we have used so let's say we build the chat bot you know how do we maintain its session where do we show you know store all this information of chat and all right so this is typically i use for my client right and i really want it to be a video so that i can explain you how to build that back end and that is also going to be useful for my own interns so that they can refer while working right so thank you very much i hope you like the video and you find it useful bye